John, we should have caught up to that right day. They camped here last night, Martha. We'll catch up with them tomorrow, all right? I hope so. Children, 
the little prayer that I taught you. It's our own prayer, children, and no one else has one just like it. Now then, if I should die before the night, I should die before the night, I ask our Lord, I ask our Lord, I ask our Lord, with all my might, with all my might, to take my soul, take my soul, and keep it fast, keep it fast, until I see his face at last. I think I'll keep them. I hit the horses. Get the wagon. Drop the trail. Find anything to eat with. No, Mom. Not even a footprint. I guess he. No, Clint. Asa isn't dead. Perhaps it would be better for him if he was with your car. Come on, Mom. A long way back to St. Joe. We'll get there somehow. Ah, ah, good morning, gents. Permit me to offer you a prospectus of our new patent, high pressure, hollow ground, steel and grade, rigid frame, ball bearing windmill. Each one guaranteed to... Mrs. Knox. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Has the stage arrived yet? I'm expecting my father. Not yet. Now allow me to offer you a catalog. Has that bunch of socks arrived from the rain? I'm looking for my son. Not yet. Now allow me to offer you a catalog. Here comes the stage now. Get out of the way, boys. Move back. Move back. Mr. Christmas, we're well, glad to have you back. How are you? Still going strong, I see. Hey, yes, sir, <laughs> late. You know what? It's hello, honey. Oh, hello, Father. It's so good to have you home again. We came to meet you with the buggy. Oh, did you? Hello, Mark. Oh. Oh, where's Clint? We'll be here at any minute now. Uh, uh, what's the news for the East, Mr. Christmas? What about the California mail? Well, boys, it's decided. The Pony Express is going through. Wow. We've got to get the mail to California and get it there fast. Uh, how are you going to do it? My firm, Majors, Waddell, and Russell, are going to give their service. We're going to get the mail from St. Joe to Sacramento in less than ten days. Ten days? Why, you can't do that. It's going to be done. 
Howdy, sir. I'm a reporter from the Missouri State Democrat. Would you mind giving me some details of your enterprise? Well, to begin with, we're going to call this service the Pony Express. The Pony oh, Express? Yeah. Well, that's a good name qualified. There'll be 190 stations spread across the country. We'll need 80 of the keenest and hardest riding men in the West for its riders, and 500 of the best-blooded American horses for its riding stock. <laughs> Say, here comes some of your stock now, Mr. Christman. <laughs> And Mary. Oh, gone, you look great. You look great yourself. Mm-mm. Sweet Applejack right out of the barrel, by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Christmas. Hello, Clint. Hey, did you get what you went after in Washington? Yes, Clint. The press is going too. I want to talk to you about that. Right. I'd like to be the first to volunteer. <laughs> but send up that bunch of broom tails of yours and get them in the oval and corrals before they kick this town to pieces. <laughs> I guess you're right at that. So you work on the Missouri State Council. Do you know a fellow that works on that paper for the name of wouldn't let Clint join the Pony Express. Oh, why not? Why, because... Well, just because. <laughs> well, that depends on whatever you and Martha say about that, honey. But I'm going to need men like Clint. Don't you, Mary? You know I do. Yes, I guess I do. I loved his father. That is going to be dangerous. I don't like the idea of Clint going. No, Mary. We women of the West are not afraid. Where our men go, we follow. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Well, come now and help me do the shopping, and we'll have a very special dinner for your father and Clint tonight. Now, my good people, the time has come when boats are going without sails. The time will come when wagons will go without horses. And when machines will skim through the air like birds. And in the meantime, what you need is bigger and better windmills. Hey, I bought one of your windmills and it wouldn't work. Well, I guaranteed it to work on the Swanee River. Now, you take it back there and if it don't work, you'll get your money back. Just a minute, young man. Uh, can I interest you in one of our new windmills? <laughs> if I needed one, I'd just hire you and put you in a field and let you spout hot air. Now, see here, young man. Take your paw off of my shoulder. And don't ever do that again unless you want to find out what a period means. Here, hold this. If I thought he meant that, he means he punctuates his words with bullets. When the pay for a Pony Express rider isn't high, it's fifty to a hundred dollars a month and found, depending on the danger of the route. Well, I'm asking for the hardest relay. What's your name? Ace Carter. How old are you? Well, I'm over twenty-one, I reckon. Where are you from? Our Kansas country, around Fort Smith. Carry any credentials? Yeah, these. May I? Your 
quite handy with your six guns. Well, I really didn't try. <laughs> what do you call that? Well, that's called the border road. I sort of figured a man riding the Pony Express, six is full would be a good hand to draw to. Of course, I didn't count the Indians. Well, I don't know. I've just about decided that I've been insulted. I'm a man of peace, but when I get my dander up, I'm a rip tail roller from Colorado Canyon. I'm a diamond back with ten rattles and a button. I'm a healer monster, a two-tailed scorpion, a tarantula, all rolled up into one. I'm a curly wolf. And when I howl, wahoo, wahoo, wahoo. Whoa, wait a minute. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Clint, fella just went in there and... If I didn't have a good iron to that, I'd run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait. I'm going to percolate him. Hey, Wendy, throw it at him. You'll do better. <laughs> There's that South Pass running to Cheyenne. That's the one I'd like to have. That's the most dangerous stretch of country on the route. Why do you want that particular run? That's a man's job. And the rider will have to take a man's chances. That South Pass country is yours. It is? I'd like to have a man on that relay I know a little more about. You may be a good rider. You may be handy with a gun. In fact, you might be just a little too quick on the trigger. Listen, Mr. Christmas. I don't know anything about you except what you've told me. I'd like a little time to think it over. When? Say, an hour. All right. I'll be around. And if you do throw out Adam, will he be sure you don't miss him? <laughs> Why don't you watch where you're going? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you. Well, I'll take a good look. You think you'll know me when you see me again? With that face? Why not? Seems to me you take up an awful lot of room for a young fellow. Any objections? Not if you'll step aside and let me through that door. Well, put it away. I'm sorry, but I can't take you. Why not? I think too much of your mother. She'd never forgive me. Well, you have been mighty nice to Mom and me. Took us in when we came off the planes after... But I'm disappointed. I sort of figured on this. It isn't the money so much, but as being a part of the greatest thing that ever happened in the West, the Pony Express. Too bad, Clint. I'd like to have you. But that's the way it stands. I'll drive home, Mrs. Locke. Now, you just get right into the buggy and wait here, because I want to speak to your father. All right. Permit me, madam. Thank you, my boy. You're a stranger in St. Joe, aren't you? That's right. Where do you come from? Oh, Southwest. Well, thank you again. That's perfectly all right. That's your mother? You live hereabouts? I don't tell me you're deaf and dumb. Oh, no, I can talk. <laughs> Then there's nothing I can say to change your mind? No, Clint. But you'll be doing your part here in providing the stock for the Pony Express. Excuse me, George. Mom? Mr. Kristen won't give me that job I counted on. Why not? Well, partly on your account. And then there's Mary. George, the Pony Express is bigger than any woman or her son. 
or his sweetheart. Mary and I have talked that over, and we've decided. You've promised the people of this nation something which they think is impossible, and you've got to make good on that promise. But it'll take the best men you can get. It, there'll be times when bravery and courage will carry on, and when the bodies of you men have stood more than human flesh can endure, when they'll have to ride through fire and flood, and over mountains and blazing deserts, but this war against time must be won. The mail must go through. And so, George, I'm asking you to give my son a chance. And if I had my other son, I'd gladly give him too. Flint? The son of such a mother won't fail the Pony Express. I'm going to enlist you here and now. To each rider of the Pony Express, the company gives one of these. A Bible? Yes. Will you repeat the words you'll find printed on the flyleaf? I do hereby swear that while I am in the employ of the Pony Express, I will be faithful to my duties and so direct all my acts as to keep the confidence of my employers. So help me God. Thanks, Mr. Christman. But what's the harm in telling me where you live? Why do you want to know? I'd like to come over and see you. I'm afraid you'd be wasting your time. I'm already engaged. I might be able to make you change your mind. I don't think so. You see, I'm very much in love. Why? I just hired the first rider for the Pony Express. Congratulations, Pete. Thanks, boys. Congratulations. You better. I better make sure. Goodbye, Mr. Christmas. See you later, Chief. See you later. Now then, men, I'm ready to take your applications in order. Come here, Clint. Well, now, you've got what you've always wanted. Meaning which? The kiss of the job. I won't tangle with him while his women folks are around. Goodbye. Did he say anything to you, Mary? No, Clint, he didn't say anything. Get the horse, Clint, and we'll wait for you. Why, Mom? Well, Christman, make up your mind? Well, I've decided to give the run you asked for to another man. But perhaps we can get together on another run. No, thank you. <laughs> so you're one of those Sunday school fellas, eh? Might not do you any harm to learn something about this. Well, you got my job, but I'll be meeting up with you again sometime. It's all right with me. Maybe it won't be.
few more miles, Martha. South Pass is only a relay station for the Pony Express, for a few scattered cabins. But it's going to be your future home. Yes, George. I think this country's beautiful. I think it's terrible. That's all right, Wendy, but what we need is a little bit of what you got right there to help us clear this road. Yeah, I, I knew I'd get into something. Now we'll be late getting in the South Pass. You're right to see me, aren't you, Mary? Well, it's been a long time since I've seen him. And think how surprised you'll be. He didn't expect it for another month. Now, just a minute, boys, and I'll tell you how to do this. I'll help you, only I'm too light for heavy work. Now, wait a minute. Less wind than more brawn. Get to work. Get them cut around it now, can't we? Yeah, I can make it all right now. Okay, now, Martha, I guess we can get rolling again. Stand right where you are, and don't turn around. Now, that goes for anyone else who tries to look at me. Only the next time, I'll shoot to kill. Driver, throw that express box down. On the other side. Hurry up. Now you passengers stand in close to the coach and drop your valuables on the ground. And don't look back. I told you not to look back. Get in that coach and get in quick. Hey, the men help pick up that wounded messenger. Get going.
What's the matter with the face? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's broken axle. Let us hope that it's nothing worse. What do you mean, a hold up? Pony rider's late, too. I'll leave on a minute. Back row. Well, that's the third time in a month. Yeah, they got me in the door. And he got me for $200. Yeah, right there. Don't worry, Hey, who's that? Hey, who's that? Hey, who's that? Hey, that? What do you do tonight? Well, yes, Ken. What happened, Ken? Well, well, hello, Mary. Hello, Ken. And, and Mom. Who did this, Ken? If I knew, do you think I'd be standing here? Threw a jerk line across the gully and threw me like a steer. Never saw him at all. And that's funny. What's funny about it? Nothing except the stage being held up about the same time. No. Stage held up? Yes, and it looks like the same umbre done both jobs. He robbed me of $200. What do he look like? You never got to look at him. Well, get after him. Blink him. You won't have to look very far. What do you mean? Nothing in particular. Ken, your mother saw him. Did you see his face, Mom? Yes. Did you identify him? Yes. Come in, Wait a minute. Wait a minute, men. Wait a minute. Talk cheap. But you've got to get the man before you can hang him. And there'll be no lynching. Men who resort to lynch law are as sad as the outlaws themselves. I've been sent out here to put an end to this sort of thing. This man must be caught, yes. But he must be dealt with according to law. You can anything of yours, Mary. All right, for the ranch in the group. Hey, I'll take this horse. Shoot for me and ride to the next station. Can't do it, Vince. You've been inside eight hours now. I thought you'd only hold me back. Oh, why don't you boys show Mom and Matt where my cabin is? I hope he brings back my thousand dollars. How much? Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs>
right where you are. Right on your knees. I didn't miss you. What? What's holding you up? A miracle, perhaps. But you wouldn't understand what a miracle is. That saved your life? That saved many a man. You're not gonna... What do you think? Well, you think so much of that book, why don't you live by it? Ain't that the book that says, Thou shalt not kill? Yes. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you shoot? Why don't you get it over with? Take this. I wouldn't send any man's soul where yours is going without a chance. Open the cover. Read what you'll find there. Until I see his face at last. Well, yeah. That's it. Where did you hear that? I don't know. Some woman. Somewhere. Long time ago when I was a kid, maybe. Hey, 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 hey. What are you mumbling about? You say to kill? You say to this book? If you haven't got the nerve to do it, give me the gun and I'll do it myself. Get on your feet. Start walking. Start your horse. Suspicion claimed wrong. Oh, is that so? Good work, Prince. Well, what's the matter? Nothing, Mr. Simpson. I think you better go for Judge Beasley right away. You're right. Those men are in a dangerous mood. I can take care of them and him, too. So we get the law organized. They won't be lost. We don't have to wait for Chris Miller, Judge Beasley, either. You're right, Steve. We don't need the law. We know what to do. I allow all this will do the job when we get it under his left ear. Inside, quick. I'll take care of this. Mother, watch him be tricky. Mary, you better go in, too. What's the idea, boys? We'll thank you to push that road agent out the door. We aim to fit this nice little necktie on him, don't we, boys? Not right here, boys. We might as give him a fit. I hate to put a crimp in your little party. But you don't get him. Get out of our way, Clint. I wouldn't if I were you. He's nothing. He wouldn't dare to. 
see. Maybe he means it. He's bluffing. He wouldn't dare shoot a citizen. And besides, ain't we seven to one? Wait. Mom, send that road agent out here. Mary, you and Mom better stay in the house. Here. Well, there he is, boys. You want him? Come on and take him. Which one of you is going to be the first to step up? Get in there. Now go back where you came from. When Mr. Christman gets here with Judge Beasley, I'll turn the road agent over to him. A hanging place. Stay back before I let you have it. But he wouldn't do that. Oh, uh, wouldn't he? Life is just as sweet to me as it is to you. And I don't bluff. And I mean what I say. You take one more step, and I'll kill you. You know, uh, that shot I cut the uh, thieves rope with was the last load of those pistols. Give them to me. For a few moments. But, Mom... You've always done as I asked you to. Please. I think I understand. Clint. I love you, Clint. I gave up a great deal to come here to be with you, to marry you and make a home for you. Don't you think I have the right to know? Yes, Mary. I think you have that right. There's, a, there's something I didn't want to tell you. That boy in there is my brother. And knowing that, you brought him in? It took a lot of courage to do that, Clint. Is there anything I can do for you before you have to go? No, ma'am. Are you afraid to die? Well, I can't exactly say I'm pleased about it. I guess it has to happen. Today, tomorrow, sometime. Isn't there someone you'd like to send some word to? I haven't got anybody to send any word to. Your mother, perhaps. Mother? If I had a mother, I don't guess she'd exactly be proud of me right now, would she? Oh, anything would be better than not knowing where you are, or whether you were alive or dead. If I were your son, would you want to know? Yes. Yeah. 
Why did you do that? Because you might be my son. Oh, no. No, you're, you're dead wrong, ma'am. Your son's in there. I'm glad I didn't kill him. That little Bible that saved his life. And that prayer in it. It's a right pretty one, too. I wonder where I heard that before. I guess it doesn't matter. There'd be a lot of folks back in Missouri. Glad when that Pony Express brings word back that H. Carter's jumped his last trick. What did you say your name was? Ace. <laughs> That's all I've ever known. Bring the prisoner. You have to come too, Martha. You're the principal witness. By the authority invested in me by the federal government of the United States, <clears throat> I now declare this court to be in session. Prisoner, you are charged with being a road agent robbing the U.S. mail and other unknown crimes, any of which are punishable by this. Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. First witness, take the stand. Hold up your right hand. Where to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help the gun? I do. Sit down. Is that the man that robbed the coach? I can't swear to it. I've never seen his face. Mm -hmm. Next witness! And I was frightened, so I didn't turn around to look at him. Well, I couldn't exactly swear, but if he is, he's the fellow that got my five thousand... five dollars. The road agent had his guns on us from the back. He threatened to shoot if he turned around. I was afraid he might do that and hit one of the women, though I can't identify him positive. I was knocked from my horse and fell unconscious. I didn't actually see him rob the mail. Mr. Knox, when the road agent held up the stage, you were the only one who saw his face. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Knox? Look at the prisoner. Is that the man? No. He's really Judge and Renaud. What kind of a court is this? Now that's what I want to know. What kind of a court is According to law, our man's innocent until he is proven guilty. Hey, move. Wait a second, Judge. There's another witness. Huh? Well, what do you know? I saw that road agent before he winged me, and he rode a pinto horse. Pinto? Prince Knox rides a pinto horse. Hold on. Oh. Oh. Judge? I'm guilty. I did both jobs. I robbed the mail and stole his horse. The Pinto. All right, get you boys. Go ahead and get it over with. All right, come on. Wait a minute, huh? Before you do this thing, I've got something to say. This boy is my brother. Oh. And that's why my mother wouldn't identify him. 
And that's why I didn't kill him when I had him cornered in the Badlands. That's all right, Kent. We'll take care of that for you. Steve? Seems to me you stood in this very spot not so many months ago with a rope around your neck. Accused of horse stealing. The boys hadn't given you a chance. Where would you have been? I only couldn't prove nothing. Maybe not. There's just as much excuse for my brother as there is for you. Perhaps more. I'm not going to tell you fellas anything I can't prove. But I am going to tell you something you don't know. Aza and I were kids when our family crossed the plains. We were held up and robbed. A father was murdered. Hazel here was stolen by the outlaws. He never had anything wrong. That's true, boys. I have too. I'm not asking this chance for his sake, or for my own. But for the sake of our mother. She never had the chance. Or he would have learned the difference between right and wrong. The things that have happened differently, I might have been in Ace Carter's boots, he might have been in mine. Well, I... Uh, <coughs> well... How do we know if we turn him loose that he won't do the same thing right over again? You have my word. And mine. I'll find a job for it. All right. Case dismissed. Look, boys. Here comes the Pony Express. 